Hello and welcome. I find myself in the somewhat unusual position of owning two mongoose dolomites. I've got the 2019 steel frame dolomite, the black and blue one in the foreground. And a few weeks ago, I got myself a mongoose dolomite ALX. And as the name suggests, it is, in fact, an aluminum-framed dolomite. I thought it would be kind of interesting to compare the two of them, see where they differ and where they have some overlap, if there is any. As you can see, there is a certain family resemblance between the steel frame and the aluminum frame dolomites. And I guess that's really not to be unexpected because, you know, they are both made by mongoose. And the uh, the measurements seem to be within fairly close specifications of each other for example the wheelbase of the steel dolomite is 1150 millimeters and the wheelbase for the ALX is 1135 millimeters that's not really a big discrepancy particularly when you consider that the steel dolomite only came in the one size. No choice in the matter. Whereas the ALX is a medium and they offer small and large as well. So, you know, take that for what it's worth, I guess. This, my measurements are not what I would call engineering precise, just, you know, the guy with a tape measure. There is one area in which these bikes differ greatly. Not surprisingly, it's weight. The steel frame dolomite comes in at 43.6 pounds, and that's after I swapped in aluminum handlebars, stem, and cranks. Whereas the ALX weighs a svelte 36 pounds on the nose. I'm going to take a closer look at the various components on both bikes for comparison's sake, and then I'm going to see how much of a difference that 7.6 pounds makes in an actual ride. The Dolomite comes stock with these really pretty blue 26-inch uh, rims. They're 4 inches wide, and they have this really nice fine sparkle metal flake, which sadly doesn't show up too well on the video. The tires are 26 by 4.0 with a fairly aggressive tread and they are tubed. I've never tried to go tubeless on them. Never really had much of a reason to, to be honest. Moving on to the drivetrain. I replaced the stock two-piece crank set with a 36-tooth chainring with a 30-tooth narrow-wide Fomtor chainring and the aluminum crank set from my specialized rock hopper. I also added a set of Rock Bros uh, resin pedals, which, you know, frankly, they're knockoffs of Race Face Chesters, but good deal for the price. For the rest of the drivetrain, we've got an Altus 8 speed derailleur, which has worked flawlessly, and a Sunrise 8 speed Mega Range freewheel. And that is a key word here it's a freewheel not a cassette. Early on I had replaced the stock steel handlebar with a twist grip shifter with this wake aluminum bar and aluminum stem and a set of Rock Bros clamp-on grips. The bike still has its surprisingly comfortable stock saddle as well as the stock mechanical disc brakes. Now we come to the ALX. The obvious difference between the two, of course, is the aluminum frame. There's not a lot on this bike that I have changed. <laughs> this may very well be my least modified bike so far. At this point, all I've really done is change a couple of the contact points. I added a set of ESI 
silicone grips, which I like quite well, and a set of Rock Bros alloy pedals with better grip than the stock plastic ones. The tires, front and rear, are 26 by 4.0. They come on drilled aluminum rims, which saves some weight. The drivetrain consists of a 2x8 system. The front and rear derailers are micro shift, as is the trigger shifter up on the handlebar. It's got a 2x crank set up front with the 22 and 36 tooth chain rings. Out back, we've got, as I said, a micro shift rear derailleur and a Sunrace 8 speed cassette. That's right, it's a cassette, not a freewheel. That means that there is upgrade potential aplenty here. We'll see how that goes in the future, but for now, I'm going to leave it be. It also has a replaceable derailleur hanger which is almost unheard of for any entry-level bike. Rounding out the components is the fairly comfortable stock MNG saddle, presumably short for mongoose, as well as the mechanical disc brakes front and rear. These work really well and at the moment I'm good with them. I may explore hydraulics in the future. We'll see. I said earlier that I was going to test that 7.6 pound difference between the bikes. Well, I'm doing this on a little stretch of my own mountain bike trail in my woods. I start at the same spot with both of them, and we proceed up a short climb, then it levels off a little bit, and I'm going to stop by this tree where the ALX is presently parked. Wow, that was easy. So, in this Dolomite versus Dolomite ALX, is there a clear cut winner? Well, for example, climbing that little piece of my trail on the Dolomite took 14.9 seconds, and on the ALX, it took 13.5 seconds. Now, this is hardly a scientific. Uh, measurement or anything like that it, but I did try to put in the same amount of effort each time and it isn't so much that the ALX is faster but it's lighter and better geared it is more suited for climbing than the 2019 ALX with the steel frame that said I love both bikes I have had more fun with the 2019 Dolomite than you would ever imagine possible from the price point. It's just been a fantastic bike for me. But, you know, moving onwards and upwards with the ALX. So, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That really does help. There's a playlist below left for the original Dolomite. And that will include a link for a first look in its purely stock configuration and there is a link below right for another video which I think you'll enjoy and as always thanks so much for watching seriously I appreciate that when you do goodbye and have a great day